All right, we finally made it to Bethel with our Bethel series. Bethel Unmasked. Yes. It is time. Bethel Unmasked, exposed, whatever you want to call it, whatever the fancy words the are. The truth of days. what's going on. Whatever the basically. clickbait words are. Um, <laughs> yeah, the truth. I mean, that's just what we're getting at here is truth. So um, we have discovered that this um, is going to be a mini series here because there is a lot of content. Um, I mean, you all saw that this episode here is two hours. It's over two hours. So, I mean, you take it in what bits you need to, but the reason why it is so long is because this initial conversation with our brother and sister in Christ there in Reading, in Bethel's backyard, was so intense and just like mind blowing that there was nothing to cut out. I mean, there were no parts to be like, eh, we just edit that out because it's just. I, so much deeper I will admit knows. I stuttered <laughs> and I was at a loss for words many times. So, um, oh, my, yeah, our faces are just completely I, dumbfounded I am, over here this whole time. I imagine that <laughs> I imagine that it might be a little bit. We uh, sound ridiculous yes, the whole time. Yeah, I was, to be yeah, I was just going to say, especially if you're listening to this, um, I imagine it sounds uh, very, very ridiculous to you all. So. Um, I was just flabbergasted at a few things because I was learning things as we were going through it. And, uh, but I really think that it is so, it, it's so important that even if you have to break this down into chunks, like definitely listen to the end because there is just, there's so much on it. I just, and our sister has put together a document that is oh my gosh. complete. Uh, and this is, I mean, it's, it's, it's very, very good. So, so the, the um, point being wanna... is we're going to go through in upcoming episodes right. point and, by and point, point and by all these point in this areas. document that she's yeah. put together and, um, and we know, will share it with you. all. Yes. So you I, that's where I was getting to. Yeah. I didn't want to, I didn't want to put her on spot, but, uh, uh, she's well, even if we just share the content, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, we don't have but to it's the too good to not, and it's yeah. too, uh, you know, and nothing has been put together like this before that I have seen, and I've researched a lot you of Bethel. You seek this stuff out I, I a do, lot. and I'm not, and, and again, I'm not, you know, if, you know I, I don't know all things, and I don't have that, but I have searched many, many resources, and I have studied this topic, you know, quite, quite extensively, um, but a lot of these things I have never seen before, and I think they're going to be very eye-opening uh, for people on how powerful this movement is, how yeah. widespread it is. And how you're probably dealing with levels of this in your church today. Yeah, that you, you don't even know or, or really understand because it's just, it, it, it's just amazing. So... As we said, it's going to be uh, a bunch of different podcast episodes going through these different uh, points on the document here. Um, it's uh, going to be, I think, very, very informative for a lot of people. So we hope you all enjoy it. Please forgive our, um, our awkward laughs and and stuttering around trying to find words because that was a live, raw conversation about this. And uh, definitely some of these things, it was, it was the first time that I had heard them. So let's dive in. We hope you enjoy it. Okay, so I guess if we start at the beginning, you guys lived in Reading a long time now? Our entire lives. I was born in a hospital downtown and I've lived here my entire life. Um, I did move to San Diego for part of a year, uh, but, but other than that, it's been Reading forever. It's only been the Reading area. Yeah. And I was born at Mercy and my grandfather ran Reading Medical Center. Which is the other hospital. Yeah, the, the other competing hospital here and my grandfather was not happy about that. Um, <laughs> uh, and other than Reading, I, I think when I was like, two, no, I was like eight when I moved out to Cottonwood, but I still, my parents were divorced, so I lived one week in Cottonwood and one week in Reading. Now, now granted, Cottonwood is only 
45 minutes away. So it's in the area. It is still... Mm -hmm. Still controlled and influenced by everything. You have to drive to Reading to actually do any shopping of mm -hmm. any sorts. There's like the no mall in between anywhere. Reading is either, a big town. Yeah. You can either go to two smaller towns, which would be Red Bluff or Anderson. But if you actually had to go and get stuff like clothing that wasn't like cowboy <laughs> clothing. <laughs> If you didn't want it to have spurs and yep. buckles and sparkles. Because rodeos are really big around here. Yeah. We got a couple of rodeo grounds. Yeah. And people who retire Bethel and, and get their one. horses. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because they own the Civic right there. Bethel owns a rodeo because they own the Civic Center. And and the that's rodeo the, ground the is rodeo. Mm -hmm. attached to the Civic. Wow. There, I, I also mean, monster I thought that you, I thought that I, you know, I, every, your, every time your I think brain, I know everything about Bethel. Your I'm brain is going to blow up. Yeah. I'm, we're not kidding. Your brain is going to blow up and I cannot express this enough. Like you need to be sitting down and calm the entire conversation because <laughs> the, you're going to, you're, you're going to get mad. <laughs> you're well, going to get real, real like, mad. Well, people listening to this won't be able to see the video, thank God, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be covering my mouth a lot, <laughs> going up and down a lot. There's probably going to be a whole lot of that. But I mean, I, this just, I, I led the whole series of podcasts up to this very interview just to, um, and I know we've been talking about this so for so long, just so excited to finally get it done. But um, I, I think the most surprising thing that, most people don't understand is how active they are in everything. Like you said with that, with that rodeo, rodeo. like why you, rodeo? why do you have a road? Are you doing? so? And so they can control all the entertainment that comes into Reading. I sent you the list. Yeah. She they did. are, they are literally like the first pair. It's the last paragraph of his introduction. Bill Johnson literally states exactly his plan. This is my plan. I am going to do this, and this is how I'm going to do this. And he is fulfilling it. It is what he is doing. He is taking over in exactly that way and infiltrating everything that deep. It's deep. It's very, very deep here. And nobody you gets that. Grown up. You guys have grown up in Reading, obviously, then, so you've yeah. seen Bethel come and, and yes. the influence and the change and all of that. Have you guys ever been to Bethel Church before? Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, we've both been to Bethel. Yep. Both have said it's really creepy when you go in. The feeling that you get when you walk in is like unnerving almost. It's weird. It's a weird place. But yeah, we've we've both attended there. Mm -hmm. We did not attend there full time because it, uh, it's mm -hmm. it's it's extremely charismatic that's how i would have that's how i would have described it before we're gonna sound ridiculous in this conversation because we didn't realize bethel was known anywhere else mm. literally we thought bethel was a thing in reading and only reading and We've, we've lived here our entire lives, and it's always been, oh, it's just those crazy Bethel people. Yeah. Ah, they're just Bethelites. Because you'll run into them, like, randomly, and they'll, because of, like, traveling, like, little squads around town. Um, so, and those they, are very popular in California. I know that because we came from California. We had one in our town like that, too, where we had the hyper-charismatic church. Yeah, everybody I, knows it's just crazy. So I know how that that. Popular. I had no idea that it was it was a thing that was weird I that the church you called me and you were like, yes, in your podcast, you said something. Are about you kidding me? Like, Bethel, Redding? Bethel in Reading, Reading. Right. Are you sure it's Reading? Because this makes no sense. Reading is known by nobody. We live in a little uh, town. Most people Come think on. That Cal Northern California stops at like a uh, Sacramento. Yeah. yeah. We live, we live three hours North That's of right. Sacramento. We live three hours South of Oregon. We live three hours from Nevada and we live three hours from the coast. We are a three hour encompass and that's the best selling point of Reading. We're close to everything. Yeah. Close to the mountains. 
across the ocean. It, it was built as a like a, a retired center town. Well, technically, I, the town was built here to service and build the dam to service and get water down to LA. That's yeah. the real reason why Reading exists. So I, I asked my mom, um, because she's lived here since the seventies. And I asked her, I said, I, I remember in my youth thinking and hearing often that Reading was a retirement town. That's how it was known. It was known as a retirement town. People would retire from the Bay area mm -hmm. and they would come up here because it was warm and there are lakes. We have two major lakes in our area. We have two major snowy mountains. There's a lot of things for retired people to do. So this was a retirement town. And that's how I remember it as a child. And I asked my mom and she said, nope, that's, that's exactly what it was. My parents, my grandparents, so her parents, moved here because of exactly that. It was a retirement town and they moved here to retire. And that's how we ended up here. But it's not exactly known as a retirement town any longer. I also asked her if she recognized when the town started changing. Like, did you recognize a certain point when the town stopped being a retirement town and started to become something different? And she said in the early 2000s, um, it really started shifting is how we kind of look at it. It didn't just change overnight. No, it was a it's, slow change. But... It's a boiling frog. Mm -hmm. The frog doesn't know it's boiling and dying in a pot of water because you increase the water's temperature slowly. So the frog doesn't notice that it's dying, but it's still dying. Yeah. Yeah. Until next thing it knows it's boiled. Yeah. It's but it didn't know it to begin with. Like what Bethel has done, you know, and you look at those mm -hmm. early 2000s. And I mean, early 2000s is right the prominence that Bethel rose to prominence in the early, or I mean, in the mid 2000s, I guess. Um, is what it, that's what Bill Johnson in 97. Um, I think he was in, in 90. I think he was in the, in 96. Um, I think Bethel broke away from the Assemblies of God in the mid 2000s. Yes. Mm -hmm. And in reality, if you kind of linked things together, that seems to be the shift. The catalyst for the shift would be them leaving the Assembly of God and being able to be more them because they have less rules. And you yeah. started knowing a huge influx of people from literally around the world. Like you can run into people from Australia mm -hmm. to from Germany mm -hmm. to uh, Italy. If, if they have Italy an accent and it's a really, if they have a very heavy accent, they are almost always here for Bethel. Yep. Why here? How'd you pick Reading? This is a weird area. Oh, I'm here for Bethel. Ah, I came to Bethel school. Oh, I put my life savings into this and mm -hmm. I came to this school and Reading's awesome. You're right, Sabrina, 96. Okay. Let See, it's say. not like I haven't looked up all of these numbers. No, I'm sure you did, and I, but I mean, I'm sure you know this too, but I, I mean, I was just looking at it just to see, because I wanted yeah. to see. I, in, I was pretty head. sure, but then I said 96 earlier, and so I was doubting whether it was 96 or not, because I could, I mean, who puts two years in the same, two years? <sighs> it is, and then in, in, um, they did, they broke off, and they said, well, got in the 50s, but uh, you know, and, and what's amazing is, is people still don't understand how widespread they are and how deep this actually is. Because it's, I, I, if you've listened to my podcast, um, I, don't, I don't even remember which one it was I did recently, but I was talking about, I was listening to my home churches, some of their music, their worship music, and two of the songs I heard, and I was like, that's that I know that's that's Bethel that has to be Bethel that sounds like Bethel that just sounds like them sure enough I looked it up Bethel I, and I mean this is and it's a Calvary chapel. it's a Calvary chapel so I mean this is like their their doctrinal differences between Bethel or I mean they're 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 pretty big or they should be at least um you know Calvary chapel is is leaning more towards this charismatic movement too which they are they they are turning into a Bethel. I feel like that's what's happening with them, and that's kind of what um, 
I mean, there's just, there's so many, so pe for people that's listening, there's going to be, we, we've agreed that the, there's going to have to be a few of these, um, quite a few, because there's more than, than we so much. Yeah, so much. And there, yes, reluctantly. reluctantly, yes, reluctantly, but we know that there has to be because there's just so many in so many different areas that people need to hear this and they need to understand this. And this goes right in with everything that I always freak out about and what I, I, I try to spend information with the, the new apostolic reformation and how this literally is one of the church's most brutal enemies right now that nobody knows anything about, but yet they accept it. They, they do all those things. What? No, it was just me. Oh, sorry. I was, you feel like you're getting passionate. I'm now. used to being loud. I mean, I you always tell me to speak up. She always tells me to speak up, and then she tells me to shush. I, well, that didn't look like her shushing you. <laughs> oh, no, no but he was looking, he was, he was looking for the sign. He was like, wait. It was a, under the table. I touched you like, that's the, like, <laughs> Well, but that's the whole thing of this, and why are we even asking you guys to come and do these podcasts with us? Because I feel like every time we talk to you, you have these, like, insane stories and you're like, yeah, it's just a Bethel thing. Like it just, yeah. it just what is. And I'm like, it's part of life around here. It, it's so is just I'm like, how do people not know this? Yeah. This is concerning. Even if you don't want to look at the doctrine and theology and all this other stuff. Like, I feel like so many of these things are so like, yeah, that's nuts. Like how are so many people deceived by this? It, it's mind blowing. It, it, Bethel does a really good job of splitting everything apart. So it doesn't like trail directly back to them. So they create all these different companies of people just that just attend the church, but then you find out that they're actually higher ups in the church, and then you know that they give out their own business loans, um, so they have like zero interest, so that way they can multiply all these companies. Um, oh, especially wait. with COVID hitting, uh, they're closed. Hold on, wait. Yes, Bethel gives out business loans. To their congregation to further the Bethel business. Now, it. I told you <laughs> this is this goes very deep. So they have a and, with GitHub business loan. What the heck is going on? Like, okay, like Bethel owns our civic auditorium. I'm so sorry. They don't actually own it. They're renting it. Caretaking. However, the company that was set up to handle the affairs of the Civic Auditorium, because it's a very large building. It's where multiple the concerts, concerts go. It it's works. a big concert hall. Um, churches rent it out for Christmas services, um, lecture speakers, mm -hmm. conferences. It's a big conference hall. But there was a, a organization set up to handle the finances of the civic. Most of the people who were the uppers of that organization were Bethel elders. So Bethel, Bethel is renting a building from Bethel elders who then give the money to the city. Okay. They also, the organization also controls who is seen at the civic who and can who can rent it out um because they ran justin peters out of town right yes yeah. yep um i know that you said this in a previous podcast that you were very surprised that bethel um but they have a campus that you go to mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah their campus is the civic auditorium Every day, the Bethel students attend classes at our Civic Auditorium downtown in Redding, California. They own the Civic Auditorium and they're using it for classes. You can watch it online on YouTube. There are many videos about what their classes look like. But, yes. On top of their main school. And then they have, they have other schools but that's their biggest one. They have other campuses. I'm so sorry, they have other campuses that you can attend. However, the biggest campus that they rent or own right now is the Civic Auditorium and they fill it. That's not 
including that their new campus that they're wanting to build. Which is supposed to be bigger than our like community college here. Oh my gosh, I have so many things to say. Um, I know. I told you. I told you. I told you. Let me just let me just say this real quick. The reason. Let me just explain to anybody listening why they are doing this is because, and Sabrina, you 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 all know this too, but this is. They, the new apostolic reformation is very, very big on the seven mountain mandate. Okay, and what the seven mountain mandates are, the seven mountains, it's the, I don't have the list right here in front of me, but it's education, politics. I have uh, the list. No, so you go ahead. Religion, family, yep. Yep. government, education, media, yep. arts and entertainment, and business. Sometimes media is um, considered science and medicine because media is now kind of rolled up into the arts and entertainment in media because that's right. how we society absorb it. Mm -hmm. But and those they, are those are the seven. And they literally take those seven mountains. They're taking those and conquering those seven mountains, and they are doing this. Uh, and and, and they, on the authority that this is what Jesus wanted them to do and would have them to do. So you noted it and you noted the verses uh, in the list that you gave me, um, Revelation eleven fifteen. Yeah, you've got all of them um, too. You know, Matthew six ten. Your come, your kingdom come. Your will be done. They yep. take apart from uh, the Lord's model prayer, the Lord's prayer. And when the Lord says, you know, this is how you should pray. Um, you know, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that's their big as it is in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven. So they are literally, uh, they, they bring Christ's kingdom and they are bringing the kingdom into all of these different areas of, uh, of society, religion, I just everywhere to bring back the Christ. This is a, yes. this is. This is to bring the second coming of Christ in. Yes. They so, believe that making Reading as close to heaven on earth will be the catalyst to the coming of Christ. Christ. Not just Reading, but this, this is their That's model. So this is the formula and the model that they're trying to accomplish to then formulate it out. Um, they have a couple of these churches in England. Like England, they have like 17 Bethel churches. I know, and that's Australia. They, I think they have one in New Zealand. Like this yeah. formula is being replicated, but they've chosen Reading as the experimental grounds to see if this infiltration of a society works or not. They're trying to figure it out. And if it works well with Redding and they can infiltrate Redding and invade, because that's the word they continue to use is invade. If they invade Redding, they can take it over and then spread it so that Christ will come again. Because you know, Jesus is sitting up there just pulling up his little screen. How's Redding doing today? Is it my I'm... ghost? Like, ah, not yet. Bill Johnson's got more. Like, really? Hi. And Sabrina, you, you noted the, the two biggest verses, Amos 3, 7, with the yep. surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals it to his servants, the prophets. They take all of these verses and they apply these to this, what's called in the study of the kingdom in, in the Bible. When we study the word kingdom or any of the time that you see that, it's called the study of the kingdom. So the, this idea of kingdom now theology is this 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 idea that now the, the kingdom is here and now that we absolutely as disciples of Christ have been given the authority to do all these things and this is how you get speaking these things into existence and you know um, he, healings and all these different things like this and and this is literally what they're unapologetically doing oh, yeah. um, and, and I mean that's just it's just mind blowing to to see, and like you said, they're they're in England. They are they are all around the world, and I the church does not understand how serious this is. 
not only how serious this is, but how widespread this is. This, like you say, it's not just Reading. This mm -hmm. is everywhere. In every church around the world right now, every non-doctrinally sound church right now all around the world is singing some sort of Bethel Hill song, some Jesus culture some sort of music. And which, I feel like it's no big deal. Like, what's the issue? And I mean, we're talking about serious heresy. I I looked up my church that I attended. I attended a church from when I was eight until I was, I had children and was an adult. And I took my children there. They were dedicated on the stage at this church. I, because all of their um, sermons are online right now, I attended or I viewed one of them and I had to scrub through the video because the songs were so awful. But then I started writing them down and I looked them up afterwards. Well, after I viewed their worship session, I stopped the video and then I looked them all up. Every single one of them were Bethel music. Every one of them. Every single song was by Bethel every song this is one of the biggest churches in reading not bethel mm -hmm. the church i attended as a child we have three mega churches in reading yes we have three mega churches in reading one isn't enough <laughs> no we have three yep. so i attended one of these three mega churches for all of those years and i have seen personally the infiltration of how a church goes from very solid to something that's a little milkier, much softer, easier to chew and digest. Mm -hmm. More appealing. It's, it's baby food. Yeah. It's baby food. Right. Yeah. And yeah. It, used, it used to be something deeper. We held at the church, we held Jewish, um, we had a Seder meal. We had a Passover meal at the church. They promoted a Passover meal and a Seder meal and did it with people who came from Israel. Like, oh, yeah. cool, really big, awesome yeah, things. Like, and now they're singing Bethel songs and only Bethel songs. And the people on stage are jumping and, and very animated. And you look at a Bethel worship service and you compare them and they look identical now. Was this a Calvary Chapel that you grew up in? <laughs> was it really? Yeah. Yes. See, and I mean, that's our commonality. And that's, that's actually, that's making me very scary because I'm it, making me nervous because there's a lot of, um, I know there's a lot of good people in that. And there's a lot of, um, th there's a lot of good teachers, I think, in there that are just very, very ignorant of a lot of things. A lot of them are older and a lot of them have not gone back, I think, to, to re-go over doctrine. A lot of this new stuff, they're just kind of going along with it. But that's not, ex that's not, that shouldn't be it's an excuse okay. because, like you said, I mean, this stuff is serious. And there's nowhere, I mean, first of all, there's nowhere biblically that we can say that this is something that we should be any sort of involved in. I mean, we're, we're told to not, you know, that we're, we are going to absolutely be hated and persecuted. And, and, you know, there's no victory in that. There's no, there's no, you know, good in that. So like when I see this and, you know, I've, I've stomached myself through a couple of Bill Johnson, a couple of his sermons and, or at least try to most of them. And <laughs> I just, I don't. There's a lot of shouting at the screen when he's doing that. <laughs> like, are wow. the sermons, are the sermons so sweet they hurt your teeth? like cotton candy yeah and i mean it's just disgusting because what he says if you're simple and that's the problem and that's why you know i think that's most people say really mean things and assume really mean things about me or about whatever the podcast whatever but i mean it's 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 really my heart goes out to the simple people that just they don't understand this and they don't know better it really does because it's wolves like him that are just leading people like that down a cliff. And I, I mean, I just feel so bad because you see these people and they, I mean, go read any of our YouTube comments, go read any of them. And they defend these people 
tooth and nail and oh, they just like they're on. just the greatest servants of Christ that you've ever seen. And and anytime you say anything against these people, you are the evil one and you are the one. I guess, you know, before I get, I mean, we, again, because we said that this is going to be many, many episodes, but as far as questions to ask both of you, I want to ask, what is, what was the biggest, most appealing thing that you guys saw in Reading of, of how do they, how do they snatch people, basically? How, how have you guys seen that, Jay? How does Bethel snatch people? Yes. Well, the number one would be the fact that they are, uh, their school is a big part of it. So they, they're not necessarily bringing in people that live here. They're bringing people from around the world and then they come and then they live here. Because nobody would choose to live in Reading where it's 117 degrees if you didn't, weren't born here. <coughs> I mean, except for to have that sense of camaraderie that they kind of like, uh, propose upon their people there that you will be around like-minded people. But uh, back when I was growing up and doing youth ministries and doing um, worship stuff, uh, cause I used to play in a, uh, the worship band. Um, not, at find, Bethel. not at Bethel. Not at Bethel. Not, not at Bethel. At, at, caveat, no, big at, caveat. At a smaller church. Not, it was a bigger church, but not as big as a mega church that she went to. It was actually an offshoot of her church. Mm -hmm. Um, but you would run into them all the time uh, because we'd go out generally after Wednesday nights and um, go get coffee or uh, go to in and out here um, as teenagers do. As one in California <laughs> does. Okay, can we not talk about in and out right now? You're going to make me uh, but you would also run into uh, everybody else who was because they would do the same thing. So they had the same type of model that they would base uh, their um, services off of at the time. So it didn't look very different unless you got really, really into it, kind of like a Freemason type thing. So from the outside, it just kind of looked like a, a gathering of all like-minded people. And you really didn't know what was going on until you got deeper into it. You didn't know it until you were like being a supported deacon or um, were trying to help out in any of these type of classroom situations. Um, so a lot of it looked pretty normal from the outside, but they ran a, uh, a spiritual, uh, what is it called? Um, worship class. So they would actually train up worship leaders and it was a school that was done in the early 2000s. So you'd find musicians everywhere here. And, but that, that's one of the reasons why you find their music so much infecting other people, because after they graduate there, they would leave and then you can apply to be a worship minister at any church. It's not like they just pick up somebody from the church and be like, you're going to be the wor new uh, worship minister because you used to play band. It's this actual job title that you're going to school for. And then you use Bethel music uh, because that's what they were essentially went to school and learned and they think that that's a great idea and so it spreads with them so um, wow you just, you just said yeah. something that i didn't even think about with all of this with the how they're they're raising people up for this and then they're going out and that's where <laughs> I, I think this is where we see the explosion of like instagram and youtube and all these different pastors just these I think it, I, I, and I haven't, I, I should trace more of these back, but I bet if I did, they all trace back there to that school. Or something, or yeah, just yeah. something that came yeah. from. Because they, they also have their Institute of Technology, so now they can infiltrate any of those areas as well, so they can be, um, um, what are they called now, influencers, just themselves. They don't even have to be a part in a church. And that makes sense because when you look at so many of these big Instagram, like I know like gr women will message me all the time. Oh, do you follow this person on Instagram or whatever? And I'm like, yeah, no, <laughs> not yeah, okay. no, no, no. The ten so, but they all look the same. It's all the same garbage. So this was going to be my point. I think this is how Bethel snatches people up. <clears throat> people from Bethel look pretty. Yeah. They all look a certain way. Very polished. Very yeah. I'm, I'm going to use really awful words and say they're white and affluent. Yeah. 
No, I mean, it's what it they're, is. They're rich white people. And yeah. I'm saying that as a white person. Right. So right. I know how privileged we all have it. Right. They market that privilege. And they market it as, look what God gave us. Look at how awesome we are. Look at how spirit-filled we are. Aren't you missing this? Doesn't it look pretty? And that's how they sell them. It yeah. looks pretty. Or successful you're gonna, because you're gonna be God. successful mm -hmm. because you are now connected to all of the Bethel people. Look at all of the connections you have. Look at all of the friends you have. Look at this instant family that you just built. Look at this cult that you just signed up for. That's that's how it goes. It looks pretty. Because then all of a sudden you'll matter. You'll be in yeah. the in crowd. Yeah, happens. you will be part of the in group. Because okay. in Reading, if you are part of the Bethel Church, what you are in the in group. You are the popular kids. You're those awesome cheerleaders in high school. That's who you are. Everybody wants to be around you and, and know you. And everybody wants that. And then everybody wants to be that, so they then want to be part of that so that they can then be admired and worshipped by all. Because you'll find, like, whole areas around here that are, like, the, the bluffs areas, which is the really nice apartments to actually live in. Um, they'll actually almost, probably at least a third of the entire buildings will be just filled up with just Bethel students. We'll, we'll get into that later. <laughs> I have a couple of articles on that in that um, list you will like to read. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, again, I, how many of these do you think that we can do? <laughs> I, I, because, uh, and, and I'm, because going into it is going to be extremely important as far as I, I would, I really want to go into every single different little thing just to just like you did. You put a lot of work into this already, Sabrina. You did a great job. You're right. I cannot do anything without saying, oh, yeah. saying names. <laughs> um, but uh, you, you did a really good job with putting this, whole, this together. And I think that we could actually break this down into different episodes because of all of the information that you have of how deep this goes. Because they've invaded everything and literally mm -hmm. controlled everything. I can't. I didn't. Okay. When y'all were like, oh, well, Bethel's awful and everybody knows about Bethel. I thought everybody knew about Bethel, right? Like, I just thought, oh, okay, everybody saying, knows yeah. about Bethel. Everybody how, knows how yeah. deep they go. Everybody must know how awful they are. Everybody must know because Heidi and Brandon know. Obviously, everybody must know. I mean, no, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't realize that everybody didn't know this stuff. Everybody doesn't realize how it's all connected. Everybody doesn't see the everyday life of how infiltrated and invaded our town is. They don't. And, and like you said, I, I, I don't, both of you, I think, like, alluded to it, but how. Why need to control a town? Like, you look at that, it's like, why, if this is just truly a church, they're just truly serving the Lord, like, why do you need to be controlling and doing all like that's not normal? They don't, and I. Uh, they don't. Here, and here, let me let me tell you why they they do it. The desire for heaven is right and healthy, but it does not replace our commission. Our commission. Dot. Dot. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew six ten. We were not commissioned to look into the clouds for his coming, Acts 111. We were commanded to occupy until he comes, Luke 1913. Occupy is a military term, and according to kingdom values, occupation is always for the purpose of advancement. That is from the last paragraph of Bill Johnson's book, Invading Babylon which is his seven mountain mandate book. He literally sets out what he is doing, why he wants to take over and how he wants to take over. This is his manual. And if you're biblically illiterate and spiritually immature, nobody's going to know this. Why? No. Well, how can you argue that? Right? Like, Obviously I can't argue Bible verses. I mean, this yeah. says your kingdom come, your will be done. How am I to argue that logic? The Bible says it. Well, the Bible does say it, but it says it in context to something else. 
Exactly. It says it with other words before it and after it that all round out to make one whole point. And if the whole point is not what you're um, putting out, you're putting out a false point. They make context to be the enemy. Yeah. Um, because that, I mean, that just kills them. And I, <sighs> he thinks of it in military terms, literally. Occupy is a military term. Mm -hmm. According to kingdom values, occupation is always the purpose of advancement. Well, and honestly, you think of like stories of people in like the outer English islands and stuff during, you know, Nazi Germany coming and invading and they take over these little places and like you hear people's yeah. stories of what life was like yeah. like during time that they but it's funny because so many stories that you guys have told and these different things with you know all these articles you've sent us, I'm like How's that any different than them being Nazi Germany and you guys be, you know what I mean? Like it's mm -hmm. literally the same thing. And that's where, you know, they use the term invade and it just, how, and that's our problem when people go, well, I just like Bethel music. It really speaks to me. It really, you know, touches my spirit. And I mean, I don't know all about where it comes from, but it sounds good. And it really helps me with my walk with the Lord. And it's like, how, well, how is supporting this truly here, helping? And, and I by listening to their music, you are supporting them financially. You are exactly. throwing your dollars mm -hmm. at invading our town and supporting the NAR movement and their formula. You are supporting it being spread all over the world financially. And, yeah. and nobody understands it's financial. This part is financial. Mm -hmm. You're throwing money at them. Here, take my money, benefit, be awesome, keep growing make more music, infiltrate more, but do they, they don't realize they're like, doing Do they have like a lot of local concert events? Like, do they do no. like- There was, <laughs> okay, so it made, yeah. it made like national news and I'm gonna be really awful and say things like pandemic. <laughs> oh. Okay, I know, I know. So our town went on lockdown just like the entire world did. Whether you're for or against masks or social distancing or anything, whether you're for it or against it, Bethel chose, well, it's hard to say Bethel because really it was just a guy from Bethel who then promoted it to everybody in Bethel. So you can't really say Bethel did it, but Bethel did it. Well, that's the way Bethel operates. Because they can't yeah. be the last one at blame. Mm -hmm. like the mafia. They're right, right. exactly. The mafia. Yes. They always have a scapegoat. They, they got scapegoats everywhere. Yeah. Okay, so they held a worship, sen uh, a worship session at our bridge. We have a world, oh, that one. Yeah. We, we have a world <laughs> famous bridge. It's called the Sundial Bridge. It literally tells time. Our bridge tells time oh, because it's a giant sundial and it literally if you're tells from, time. Like, in an airplane. <laughs> no. You can you can walk up to the sundial and you can see where the line is on it and it will literally tell you the time. Uh, Our bridge. I, I've never seen it actually oh, work. It was where we were um, knitting in public. I, I know, I know, I know okay. it was. I've just never seen it actually work. I've been there many But yeah, times. it's like it is a world famous bridge. Okay. <laughs> now they held this worship session underneath the bridge it's um there's a museum beside the bridge there's it's a park kind of area it sounds all homeless it's not <laughs> it's like a big yuppie like if you go and see like an england like river joint and they're like we built this fantastic uh, yeah. right it's one of those bridge. okay it's a pretty it, like it's a beautiful backdrop people mm -hmm. take photos there mm -hmm. it is legit a place bethel held a worship center a session there and it was on our first little bit of lockdown and there were like 1500 people who show up who showed up to it and when you're in lockdown and it's brand new and everybody's supposed to wear masks and everybody's supposed to social distance again i don't care if you're for it or against it this was a big move like this was kind of a show of how much control they have right. because nobody nobody stopped it nobody yeah. Yeah. no wow. officer no that they didn't go down and stop it they didn't break it up i am all for so we have police 
dragging women out of a bank for not. Oh, oh, goodness, no, that. goodness, no. We ain't got stuff like that here. Come on. Especially <laughs> Bethel <laughs> bought our police department. Did you see the list? Yeah. They've, yes. they've bought drones. They've bought positions. They've bought entire units for the police department. And see, that is a that is a podcast on its own. The Bethel Police Department, like that. Is. Like how? What? What does a church have any form of business? Right, a biblical church. You look at scripture. Where do you see go and pay for and influence the local police department? Police department. You know, like, that's just mind blowing. Um, one of the gentlemen from Bethel said something that I really thought was very interesting on that. Now I'm looking that up. Oh well, part of it is. If you're gonna, if you're gonna disguise yourself as a positive, light-bearing person, or church, or organization, you want to do as much public good as you possibly can. You want to dump buckets of money in public affairs mm -hmm. because then people shut up. Oh, but Bethel does so good. Oh, they're so nice. You can't argue it. You can't argue how much good they do. You can't argue it. Mm -hmm. it's they like do good. <laughs> Fruit, right? Yeah, the fruit. Oh man, their fruit's shiny. It is some good looking fruit. It feeds the whole town. That's what you're gonna get is. sick on it though. Mm -hmm. It's got food poisoning and you are gonna get sick. Yep. Bethel says things like there is a lot of growth downtown and we want downtown to be successful. That's because Bethel is starting to build everything downtown. <laughs> the civic, yeah. the civic, okay. So the civic that they own and do all their classes at is literally right beside of the Sundial Bridge. They're all in one little area. It's kind of like a, a park or a, uh, a museum area. We have a very large Turtle Bay Aquarium Indian Museum right there. And then the Sundial Bridge and then the Civic Auditorium. And they're all just right there in one cul-de-sac. Oh yeah, there's, so there's some am outside amphitheaters there yeah. too that I'm yeah. sure that they uh, resource yes. a lot of. Yes. So all of these are in one cul-de-sac. At one time, Bethel was not allowed, they were literally and legally told they were not allowed to be at the bridge. This was years ago because they were being so bothersome to the people of Reading that literally the town had to issue a statement that was like, Bethel can't be at the bridge anymore. This is not acceptable. Like panhandlers mm -hmm. or solicitors at the Walmarts. Like they were on the same category as that. No, yeah. Bethel, you cannot go and talk to people. No, you may not send out your people two by toe. No, you may not do all of these healings on the bridge. People just want to be on the bridge. They don't want to be bombarded by this. So they were legally not supposed to be on the bridge. They own a school on the same property as the bridge. Mm -hmm. How in the world now are they going to stay off of that bridge? They're not. And now the police can't say anything about it because they're bought. And the school is on that property. It just so happens that we now have a new hotel that's and right there. We have a built. fancy dancy brand new hotel that was just put in right beside of this to house the people who are going to the school right across the street. That was built there to actually be we could, the bridge. We could discuss the fact that Bethel is buying up the entire downtown Please. area so that their Bethel students have more housing. We could talk about that Reading people are being pushed out of their housing that they've lived in for years and years because the developer realizes that Bethel turns around 800 or 1800 students a semester or a year. Why wouldn't I want that money? Because that money is more money than the people who are just renting in our town. Rent has gone up. It's doubled in the last couple of years. Uh, there's actually it's several doubled. people that I've even talked to that uh, their rent literally, and they live in like not the greatest places like they're built in the 50s and haven't been maintained and their rent has gone up from $600 within the last year uh, $600 to 
nine hundred, and they're getting ready to bump it up to a thousand dollars. Wow! And these are for like two bedroom apartment because duplexes. They can get it. There's a whole page on Facebook dedicated to house shares that are solely Bethel owned. The people go to Bethel Church mm -hmm. and they're going to Airbnb their rooms in their home for Bethel students so that you can be part of a family. It's kind of like a, a foreign exchange student mm -hmm. style. This is hard. It's hard to explain how connected all of this stuff is without sounding all conspiracy theory-ish. And in reality, I thought this guy wore like a tinfoil hat for years. Yep. And I, I sound just as crazy. It's not that I didn't believe him before, but now I just, I just sound just as crazy. Because it's nuts. I mean, this is like to normal people when you, and this is like, the, but again, this, this is, is what, this is, when you just listen to Bethel music, you just like Jesus culture, you just blah, 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 whatever. Like, this is no. what you're supporting. This is- You insane. are throwing your money at the invasion. You I mean, are doing that. It's not biblically sound either. So, I mean, it's garbage all around, but then on top of it being garbage music in the first place, this is what you're supporting. This is what yes. you're doing. Yes. This is a mafia that like parade, like- Is there a lots of small business in Reading? By any chance? Uh, yes. There was. Yeah. Yes. No, no, no. Yes. <laughs> no, there's, yes, there is. There is, there is lots but of small businesses. It's all owned by Bethel people. Right? Yes. Yes, it is. That's I where have I was lists going with and that. lists of them. Um, any place new that is small, family owned, or it is a unique building That's of any right. sort, mm -hmm. um, it's going to be Bethel owned. So we got some, recently we got a lovely bakery. Artisanal it's an artisanal bakery. It's um, one of the articles actually mentions this bakery in it. Uh, yeah, I saw the bakery. They um, they yeah. were Bethel Bethelonite. Um, there's actually a production company here that is a Bethelonite production company that makes movies that are mm -hmm. actually like award winning. I'm gonna send you one of them. Don't worry, it's great. <laughs> on oh. YouTube, on YouTube, you can watch a series called Red White and blue. blue. Mm -hmm. It's about Reading. It's put on by them. There's also a movie on YouTube called In Trump. Oh, The Trump I Know. It was produced by Reading. It is an actual movie. Go watch it on YouTube. It's great. It's so good. You'll love For it. You won't get mad at all. You won't get mad at all. <laughs> I won't. Calming. I didn't switch there. Oh. I'm already feeling a heart attack going on, I think. Like, this is this is way more than I even like was I like I've been planning for this for a long, long time. And like I've studied I bet you weren't time. planning this. Mm -hmm. Like I oh, know you like, I just my the, the main goal too obviously is just explaining to people exactly where how much this is all infiltrate invaded is the better word. Mm -hmm. How much this is invaded how it affects and i mean like you said you're coming you had no idea and most people don't and that's what's so harmful right now and the reason why i asked a small business in town is because yes what people don't understand is when they are supporting bethel like you said they've, they've got a perfect system set up to where they have traffic coming through bethel anywhere in reading they bethel is making money so anytime there is somebody anywhere near Redding, California, Bethel makes money. Yep. And, and you only aid to these people when we, when we just feed into this. You got me flustered now. And I even had a thing right now because I'm just, I, I cannot believe how serious a lot of this stuff is. And, in, and one of the main things that I think um, I want to come across in, one of the main heresies that Bill Johnson believes is he believes in this idea of kenosis, where it's this idea that Jesus completely, what they do is they try to dumb down the divinity of Jesus. Yep. And, and that's, you no. Know, and anytime you see anything like that, you should know to run, but they know, he knows how to make it sound great. But what it does is it literally denies the divinity of Christ without 
sounding like it denies the divinity of Christ is exactly yes. what that, that process is. It's why, kind of like self-help. Why right. would you need the divinity of Christ if you can make it happen? Exactly. But, but mm -hmm. obviously you made it happen because Christ is just around. But that's just like an on the back burner thing. Mm -hmm. They dumb down Christ to bring themselves up. Mm -hmm. Well, look, Christ did it and I can do it too. They dumb down Christ to what we can do. I don't remember that in the Bible. I don't remember the Bible talking about how mm -hmm. us human beings were as awesome and healing and as amazing as God. People do better than even he did. Don't you know that's what he meant? She's saying that sarcastically, anybody Absolutely that's listening. Sarcastic. Right. Um, oh, sarcasm yeah. is something I speak fluently. Yes. Uh, yeah, no, I think, no, <laughs> anybody listening. But I think Romans, I, I think Paul says in Romans when he, when, when he doesn't have the ability to do right, he wants to, but he doesn't even have the ability to do so. Um, again, I mean, these people just cherry pick verses that they, they, they do things with, and then we just go along with it because it sounds good. It has the word Jesus in it. Like you said, it has rich white people dancing around in it. So people think it's safe. And I know that's, again, like you said, saying this from another white person, this has nothing to do with race. This doesn't, this is just no. obviously for how we're identifying. This is how it is at Bethel. Yeah. And I, mean, I don't know if everybody knows that. that. But I think, but, to be honest with each other, I think that's the way that it is across the country. I think that we look at somebody like that, we see business casual, and we automatically feel safe. Because we yeah. go, you know, the, the, the person that, that looks all nice, and like you said, the beautiful people that look good, well, obviously, those are going to be the ones that I want to follow. Those are going to be the ones that we're going to run to whenever something happens. And we're going to so, trust. So especially when they say, Jesus, I'm all over that because, you know, I mean, that's, that's, ugh, goodness go grief me. Um, wow. I don't, I, how we, okay. You, you ask a question. I, um, cause I need to formulate a question. <laughs> And then we probably need to, like, let them, like, we have held them hostage for this one, um, and we need to plan okay, out so more let's, of these. I know, we need to, and this is what's hard to try to pick from, like, all the things that we need to talk about in this, but, like, I know we've covered a lot, but is there anything that, I know we're going to break down and kind of get into specifics, right? We've touched on a lot of topics, and we will, in follow-up podcasts, talk a little bit more specifically and in detail about these things, because there's just too much. I mean, this is to just give you guys a little mm. taster of everything that goes really deep, and how involved it is, and how weirdly involved it is. All of this goes deeper, and we could talk about each yeah. individual topic. And I mean, Tune in for more. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we all communicate on a daily basis and we're yeah. constantly mm -hmm. like, what, what, this is crazy, you know, so there's a lot here, but is there anything that you like want to make sure that you share today? Like in this first one, was there anything like specifically that you, I just want to make sure That's that, a good you one. know, we give you guys an opportunity. Is there anything specifically like you have one opportunity to tell someone like, Hey, this is what it is. Like, is there anything specific that you want, to, you would want to make sure to share today? I know there's Probably a lot of the fact that like in Bethel, a lot of people will just think of like a church in a town and not think a whole lot of it, but literally the amount of their congregation makes up one tenth of the people who live in Reading. Oh. We have we have ninety thousand people in Reading, and there are support uh, there are supposedly eleven thousand people who go to Bethel. They own one tenth of the city, in just their congregational that's numbers. Just reported numbers. That's yeah. 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 No. Bethel no. yeah. has to be I I'm gonna make a bold claim because I don't see anything. I think this is probably the large one of the largest cults. Yes. Ever. Mm -hmm. One of the most like evangel it, it's not evangelical because it's hyper charismatic. That's not really, you know, you can't but it this Christian, Christian cult. Yeah. This is this is one of the largest Christian cults. I and mean, it's like, infecting. And like you said, I mean, any church that isn't biblically solid that's playing their they're not biblically solid, therefore they're playing their songs. But it's literally infecting. Like if you were to take 
how many people, so you just said 11,000 there, just in your town. In our town. Yes. Everywhere that's being infected by this music, these teachings, these doctrines, these beliefs, you know, the, all of these things, like these numbers are just, I mean, literally like rivaling the Catholic church as far as just. I, I read one statement and I'll have to look it up and find it, but it said that Bethel imports more students. It was either number one or number two in the United States. It imports the most students of the United States. It's either one or two, and I'll have to find the reference. I, I believe that 100% with the numbers. But they, um, it's 1,800 students. So it's wow. a lot. It's not a small, it's not a small little rinky dink school, and that's only BSSM. That's not any of their other schools. Mm -hmm. That's only BSSM. If you yeah. go to Bethel Tech, that's a different, and if you go to healing school that's different and if you go to sozo that's different and if you go to their transformation center that's different and if you go to their healing rooms that's different and if you go to their prayer stuff or their art clap all different and i i want people to know that it's a different jesus mm -hmm. it's different it's not the same jesus you shouldn't be worshiping him no the, and i mean that's, I a, that's think a great point. that they're pushing out their Jesus and disguising it as the same guy I worship. But if that imposter looks right and sounds right, they're going to believe that imposter. And he's an imposter. God's oh, buddy Christ. He's an imposter. Stop yeah, worshiping him. No, exactly. I mean, amen. You're, I mean, you couldn't be right. You couldn't be any more correct. It's a false Jesus that cannot say. It is. It, uh, yeah. So... I guess what I want, I guess this is a question, but also your answers will also be show the importance, I think, of um, why we're doing these podcasts and everything, too. But how do you think that this would have skewed your view of life and Christ and all of these things continuing on or, or you know, because I, I think before we met, and and before you know you, you start coming to our church, um, you had started knowing that these things weren't. You're like, this is weird. Yeah, they're not I right. I don't know why, but this is weird. Mm -hmm. So between you two, what what is it? How do you think that this type of Christ and learning affected or would have affected you? If that if that makes sense, because I know it didn't because. Easily, for a lot of people, this type of Christ makes people either, A, walk completely away from the faith, and, or just go deeper into this heresy. And, and But it's most of the time, it's shallow, nothing Christianity. You just spoke exactly of the dynamics of our town. You either are all for the Jesus that Bethel promotes, or, you know, the Christ that I promote. And that's how they say it. You either are for the Christ that we support or, you know, you're with that guy kind of thing. You're either all for Bethel or you're all against Bethel. Bethel represents Christ to the people who do not believe in our town. Bethel is Christ. You reject him at all costs. You don't think of anything he says because those people who follow around that Jesus, they're insane. And the people who don't follow Christ or are believers at all or real believers at all. That, that's upsetting. I mean... Yeah. It's essentially they, they gave it's heartbreaking. Yeah, they're the ones out there promoting themselves so much and so often, kind of like Mormons are. So you know what the Mormon religion we, is because they come and knock on your door. That's the same type of thing. And so you either are really for it because you know you needed somebody to talk to, and they came and wanted to be the person you needed, the person that you needed, or. You're the person that was like, you're kind of crazy. You shouldn't be asking all these personal things. 
Get out of my house. Get out of my house, yeah. <laughs> Let me go. I'm, I'm trying to shop and go and deal with my kids. I don't need you to stop me and ask me if there's, I feel that there's something hurt about you. Oh, did your shoulder hurt? Yep. I bet your shoulder hurts, doesn't it? Stop in the grocery store and talk to me. I've had them try to get people that, like, that I went to church with that literally were, like, wheelchair bound. Like, we would carry them up their chair, up, up the stairs to go to service. Uh, service with us. And, like, his legs never worked at all since he was born. And they were, like, trying to, like, convince him that he can now walk because they prayed over him. So, so Gentiles, mm -hmm. and I guess I'll call non-believers Gentiles at that point, they see that and they go... That's disgusting. That's disgusting and crazy. Why would I want to buy that snake oil that that idiot is selling? It doesn't work. Christ doesn't work. Why would I want to that? Like, why would I want to buy into that? Why would I want anything to do with that guy if that guy looks like those Bethel people and they're gross? So Bethel you, is you either people they go, no thanks. I don't want God. I don't want your. Yeah. I don't. Yes. Bethel. I, I I get why people would think that. It is so heartbreaking in our town, the dichotomy of believers versus unbelievers and how passionate they are because it's not Christ they're battling. It's Bethel that they're battling with Christ's name on them. And they don't want anything to do with that. And the people who are following Christ are like taking up their swords going, no, this is not okay. We're going to take over the town because you atheists are awful. And the atheists are like, oh my gosh, Bethel is ruining everything. Christ is ruining everything. We must destroy Christ. Yeah. Kind of like the modern day uh, Christian crusaders. Yeah. Took up the name. And the Catholic God. Church took up the name. Mm -hmm. yeah. It literally sounds like the Middle Ages. Like, it, it, does. It, it does. It does. It's a very modern version mm -hmm. with lots more music and gold sparkles, yeah. but it's a modern day version of that. Drew, you said something interesting earlier. You said it's like the Mormons, and it really is because they are they are involved much the same way yes. for different reasons. They are. Um, yes. But still, in the way of bringing the kingdom, they don't. They're not. Okay. They're not uh, charismatic. But more. But the way that they work, Mormons are very wealthy. They're very. They're into politics. They're into mm -hmm. all these things, just like Bethel. We've discussed this before. Mm -hmm. um, my sister lives in oh, Mormon yeah. country. <laughs> <laughs> um, her mother-in-law was a Mormon. Um, her husband was a Mormon. My sister's husband was Mormon. Um, so they are like in Mormon country. We knew Mormons. They were our friends. So we know exactly the oh, Mormon yeah. look. And I, I hate stereotyping it like that, but it's... If they have a you look, can, you they can tell who they are. Mm -hmm. They're, sure. they're, yeah, they're the greatly dressed. Mm -hmm. They they're are smart. Like more... They are well cut. They are cute people. I mean, who doesn't want to believe a cute person? Yeah. But that's how they, that's how they goat you in. Mm -hmm. um, they support Mormons, support their own. They are business savvy. They give out loans of their own to their own congregational members. Mm -hmm. They support their own to the end. Tooth and nail, I will fight that mine is right. No, no question of maybe this is wrong and I should, why am I doing this? What is it? I need to know what it all summarizes down to. And they don't. But they're pretty. Yeah. And they're wealthy. And, I think it's the, and they talk nice. The big issue is that most, they help. most of these religions rely on the fact of wealth is yeah. going to be the prosperity of you believing. That's what you're going to get out of it. And that's they're what Bill Johnson God. does as well. They're selling God. Because their big thing is, um, what is it called? Um, he's called it like EMOP or something like that. I had uh, somebody who used to work in the church, and he had one that Bill Johnson actually pray over him for it. Essentially, he said, you'll get everything in your life just served that will just be given to you as well for believing. And that's oh. where I think Satan's biggest lie is getting us to not understand 
heaven and the kingdom and eternity. Because yep. the moment you don't properly understand that, you're not living heavenly minded, looking forward to no. the kingdom and all of that. Who doesn't want to succeed here? Who doesn't want to have a nice life and get to do good things? Mm -hmm. Like, why wouldn't you? Like, that's Satan's greatest life. Yeah. And any I, want, I want lots of money. I want I all of my problems taken care of. I want that. But this is not the way to get it. You don't buy into a cult to get riches. You don't. And it is. It's exactly that. They're trading it for the riches of this world right now. But don't you I'm going to tell you, it looks good. But don't you feel like, you know, and I don't know which verse it is off the top of my head. Maybe you do. But, you know, the verse where he says, you know, truly they will have received every blessing that they're going to oh, get in the so. here and now, right? Like when yeah. you look at this and it just makes it's, those scriptures. It's Matthew with the Pharisees. Yeah, yeah, but it just makes those scriptures come such to life because you look at this and it's so like my heart, I'm not angry at these people. I'm not mad at these people. My no. heart is angry at these people because I go, I'm so sad for them. Exactly. And so it's sad. Because all the good that you're ever going to receive is what you're getting now. And I know <laughs> that all of this burns at the end it's nothing and that uh, that's awful that you're believing into it but what really Eden, what really makes me mad about this and i don't think i've heard people say this enough but a person like bill johnson he knows what he's doing oh yeah he oh, absolutely exactly what he did it's like you christian know LML. lmm yeah mlm so many different you know, and, and I've seen it. I have, and I never, because I never thought about it because this was never a, never something that I would ever want to do, nor do I want to continue, but I love it, if that makes sense. But so I would never do this, but I have seen doing this. So many different opportunities where you're like, man, people ask you the most vulnerable questions mm -hmm. and you can literally, you can make the Bible say what ever yep. you want it to say to your benefit and like right? and, yes. and i think that's just not that i would ever ever do that but that's our flesh and i think not not that that thought went through my head of course to do that but i go it scared me because i was like wow this is exactly how they do that they take somebody who's weak like that and they pray Vulnerable. on them. they know exactly what they're doing too and that makes it worse um, because, I mean, that's just all sorts of abuse. But he is not a stupid man at all. He's Bill brilliant. He's a genius. He's insanely smart. He is he the is. most brilliant marketing businessman I have ever seen in real life. He is amazing speaker. at marketing what he's marketing. It is yeah. good, and he is good at it. He is the best businessman. What he's selling is not good, though. Don't no, buy it. and you know what else that is is interesting about him too is he doesn't defend himself, and for and for the size, yes. he puts that energy yes. into opening new heretical schools. I think <laughs> it's really hard to look positive and to promote to promote being so positive if you're going to get nasty and defend yourself. You have right. nothing to. You have nothing to defend yourself for. You did what's right. Therefore, you don't have to make a statement. Anything. You don't explain yourselves to people. You're you on God's side. God, God has your back. So he doesn't. He doesn't explain or and himself. That, you know how much he doesn't. Really that yeah, makes? Like that's a you know it's how, so smart. You know it is smart. so smart. But how much you have to not care about what you're doing to do that? Like, there's no way that, that I will, from somebody that has just recently had a mental breakdown because of teaching and, and because of these things, I will tell you that this does that to you. And you're like, if, if it doesn't, and these people are saying these, and these things, and you're just smiling and making your million, there's something seriously, seriously your wrong. Conscience is completely you weird. have zero conscience. Because there's that you can't. There's no possible way you can do this. People can't tell you and share the things that they share with you, and you not get upset. You know, not not at them, but I mean, just at situations. Like it's heartbreaking. I mean, 
it's literally you deal with the most heartbreaking situations of people's lives. These people are broken. They have nowhere else to go, nobody to talk to. And, you know, it's just, ugh, it just makes me so much more mad on that shepherd side of it. And that's why we, that's why I do what we do with this podcast. That's why, you know, bringing you guys on here to, to help us spread not, not the truth and just knowledge of what, how deep and how bad this is. Well, you started out as nobody's reaching nobody's. Yeah. And right. I think, the, I think the nobody's need to be reached. Yep. I yep. think that affluent white people mm -hmm. who have had the word preached at them 75 different times in 75 different sparkly rooms with the gold and the flags and, we have to stop presenting it to the same people in the same way. Yep. And we need to say it right and get it out right. So the right people, that sounds awful. <laughs> no, that sounds no, awful. no, What you mean though? Yeah. No, it but doesn't. Like, so you it doesn't. The right I, I'm not the, I'm not one of the right people. That's not what I mean at all. No, but I know. No, like I the think... right person at that time who needs to hear it in that yeah. way. I've been preached the Bible forever, forever, every single Sunday, every Sunday. It didn't matter if it was snowing. You were going to show up there in a skirt and you were going to do the whole thing and you were going to be cheerful and then you were going to go home and do it all again on the next Sunday. Like it just, you were there every Sunday. I went to Awana's and I learned all the Bible verses. And then I went to the adults that like, I was in the church. I knew the things. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. Um. And I, I guess I didn't, I guess I didn't realize that I was that frog who was boiling yeah. until yeah. somebody said, Hey, Hey frog, that water's awful hot. Do you want to get out of that awful hot water where it's gross? You know you could. It's over here on the light side of North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, good thing you're going to be moving here soon. So, I mean, we'll, we'll get this taken care of. Don't worry. We'll really be frogs getting out of this boiling pot. Literally. We're really going to be jumping out of it all the way across the coast. <laughs> We, we had no idea we were boiling. We didn't know how much it infiltrated and how, how small the twisting was. Yeah. How small and subtle everything changed. Yeah. And when it started to subtly change, it actually had a big, deep impact. And the impact on the congregation who took it in and ate it, we were the ones who we're sick on it yeah and then got confused and I have to unwind and unravel all of the education that I was taught because some of it was right right but some of it was wrong and I'm confused on what's wrong so I have to go back and reanalyze everything so now I'm having to relearn everything and I doubted all of it because an idiot taught me yeah and that's how I felt like if you're taught by an idiot you have to stop Everything that you've ever known that that idiot has taught you, and you have to go back and relearn it. And it's hard. It's very difficult. I'm an adult. I spent 36 years doing it one way. <laughs> yeah. I have to wake up one day and just turn around and do it a different way? That's hard. It's hard yeah. not to think that, well, if I just did it this way, God would bless me. And if I just, man, maybe if I just had more faith like Bethel said I should, maybe I wouldn't be so sick all the time. Maybe I wouldn't have this genetic disorder. Maybe if I just believed more. Maybe if I had more faith. People don't that understand the burden awful. that that is. They it's don't understand awful, the burden that is. But it's that my is responsibility. Yeah. It shouldn't be my responsibility to have enough faith for something that was already done. It was already done. Right. Why do I have that? Yeah. Why do I have to have more faith? I can have faith that it was done and that it was done in completeness yeah. and that I'm an awful sinful human being who's just trying to survive this world and live it as close 
to Christ as I can. Because you're not living for here. Yes, you no. you have all this, but this isn't your end game. So no. you have to get caught up in it. If you're yes. not today, guess what? Who cares? Because this is but a wisp of time, right? Like it's not your focus. It would, it would be really easy at this stage in our life to sell out to Bethel. Mm -hmm. It would be so easy to slip into it seamlessly because it's everywhere. And it tastes good. And there's money in it. You'd be successful. <laughs> you know, I know. Right? We you know, would be, we could be successful. Um, you know, not live in a 1950s house that's falling You could apart. be an Instagram influencer. Oh, man. I would be right. the best at that. I know. Everybody You'd just does everything they party. You'd have everything. Drew, you'd be working at the Bentley dealership doing time. Right? <laughs> well, even now looking looking for a new job, it's really hard because I mean, there's so many places that pay more than what I'm making right now. Literally making fast food, but you know who owns those places is yeah. that, that want to support them. I, even our even our coffee shops, there's like probably Dutch Brothers. Dutch Brothers. There's Kaleidoscope Coffee. There's uh, the new it, one that just opened up over at the mall. It. Does Bill Johnson live in Reading? Yeah. Well, I think he lives weird. on like I think he lives on the outskirts. Outskirts of town because we have like right. we have millionaires that live here. Oh yeah, we have they million dollar homes live all over in town. Yeah. <laughs> they live on the or, uh, up in the, the hills over. Or they have these really really awesome properties yeah, in the just, middle of Reading, and right. they're all gated off, and they look like castles on the inside of them. And I'm talking legit, like they look like a castle. So you'll be driving down like one of our main roads and you'll see this gated, gorgeous gates, ironwork, brick, beautiful. Oh my gosh, they're so pretty. And then through the trees, you will see this giant brick mansion that looks like a castle. It's got like six car garage and the whole spires and mm -hmm. everything. We have millionaires that live here. Like we, I didn't know any of this. I thought we were some podunk town. See how redneck we are? <laughs> All the fancy folk. You, you're on the wrong train, man. If you just join that, no, battle, you see that too. I mean, it, it would be so simple. Drew could get in with a business that were owned with them. Mm -hmm. We could be part of their like family. It would be easy to join a cult, man. <laughs> Wouldn't it? But, but then Charles Manson makes you go kill people, eh? right? <laughs> but then you all have to drink Kool Aid. Yep. Uh, I, I can't do it. Yeah, it's really hard. It's high price for your soul. It is very high price for your soul. And people pay it all day long. Well, I, again, I can't thank you again. And I think these future podcasts that will be, or these, these, whatever videos. They'll be podcasts. Podcast, yeah, they'll be podcasts. Um, well, I want to follow the um, the the out the document that you sent me so because do the document that you sent me breaks it down perfectly of all of the different things. Plus, we we're going to have resources to give everybody to uh, back up anything that was talked about. Um, for like I said, um, there was a lot of work put into this, and it was done very very well. Yeah. So um, it, it will it will be all there for people to to access right because then we get those people who comment they're like oh we don't know who these two people are do they even live in right. running any two any people can make up any kind exactly. of exactly i want to make sure that everybody realizes exactly what we stated was at least in some fashion or another in our local newspaper and i'm not saying that they're not biased but that's the information that was presented to our town mm -hmm. so I have access to all kinds of things like this. And so I were, I tried to give every reference so that other people could see the depths of the involvement. And then they're not taking my word for it. They're not listening to just the information that I'm saying because I know nothing. I know nothing. I've lived here and I've experienced this stuff and I have access to our newspaper and 
I can tell you all kinds of personal experiences of what it's like. And then I can also show you what it's like for our town publicly. And that's exactly what we will be going through. Yeah. Because I think that's the, those are the things that I, we've watched. There's been a couple other uh, people that have tackle, tackled Bethel Coltish. Um, they I've have watched on- them and I like, I have sat there yelling at the screen. You've almost got this right. What is wrong with you? Why don't you know this rest? What? No. That's because See, all that's what, what, beginning is not the, even front reading. It's Steven, just like kind of looking it up online and watching everything the, paper since The Twisted, I think it's <laughs> Twisted Church. Mm-hmm. Stephen Co- Cozard. Yeah, Cozard. Okay. Yeah. I watched one of his videos the other day and it said something about how Obviously, house prices didn't go up in Reading because of the car fire and that the um, they didn't succeed in getting the Sacramento um, air connection. Which we do. I don't know what he is talking about. We have both of those things. Yep. <laughs> house prices, they went up $100,000 overnight. Yeah. Overnight, $100,000 more because of that fire. That fire took out houses oh, that were then needed by people. And then we have a town that supports a school that needs a rotation of buildings. Bethel got the airline connector from LA and I think it's Sacramento. They got that. We have both of those things. What's he talking about? They even had to make the airport like a ramp bigger so that way they could have the bigger planes come in. Like I watch these videos and I'm like, oh, you're You almost got this right. Okay, so the church, one of those documents, okay? One of those documents says that the church essentially bought the airline. What they did was they put in a bunch of money saying that they were going to buy part of the airline, and then they put in a retainer saying that if their students didn't buy X amount of tickets, that they were going to support it and just financially buy them off. So if they didn't make it through their students, they were going to make it and give it to the airline regardless. So it was beneficial for the airline to come to Reading. So the airline came to Reading. They have bought, I'm not kidding, they bought police officers, they bought drones, they bought units, they bought airlines, they bought businesses. I didn't even know you could buy some of these things. Yes. Oh yeah, if you Um, have enough influence, yeah. They have. They, okay, so their, their new campus that they're buying is $148 million. Oh my God. They have spent $148 million on one campus. They have others. 10 million of that, 148 million, went directly to the town. It went directly to the infrastructure of the town because the town was given money to um, change and build up that area and that sub, uh, the road and the light the and the off ramp. They were able to um, improve those for the people who were going to be there. So the town got $10,000 in one of their streets and roundabouts and freeway exits. They got it all taken care of you know, for those zoning permits that they needed passed. My, yeah. Whew. It's gonna be right across the street from where our community college is. Um, oh, really? This is, yeah. this is one of their buildings. They just bought a building behind Drew's shop. Nice. It was $4 million. They, Which was an they bought that. It's, it's the Sozo price. building, the Transformation mm-hmm. Center. They own that, it's $4 million. They own it. How many schools do you want me to show you that they own and own the building for? Yeah, most places here that if you have a small business, you definitely do not own the building that you are have your business in. You're you're renting it. Especially if you, you haven't been there for longer than 20 years. Oh my gosh. And there, I mean, is there a lot of giving that happens inside of the church itself, or is that just mostly from the uh, yeah? After okay. The one of the people who were, were written in an article that I was reading, um, they said that by promoting the church and by supporting these businesses, 
the church asks for a at least 10 percent tithe so i i am a business so i i'm a, a lender and i'm going to lend you 10 grand to start a business but now i'm going to ask for 10 percent back for a tithe because you're you're benefiting and you're doing a great job but don't forget to give to god i'm god i'm bethel don't forget to give to god also, don't forget, you also have to pay interest on that $10,000 loan, mm -hmm. but don't forget that 10% to God, because that makes sure that you're going to be part of the beneficial growth. Like you're going to be part of that financial growth. You got to do your part so God can do his part. So if they're getting a minimum of 10% from all these businesses, yet they own nearly every business. Plus all the normal, just people yes. who go to give, plus anybody who wants to give above and beyond because they're just that good of a kingdom building Christian. Yes. No, that's how you get to buy, you know, yeah. hundred plus million dollar buildings. It's just and now you can em yeah. after building. And plus you can employ anybody from the church as well because they, they are here for school and yes. then obviously get here and realize that they can't afford they to can't go to school They can't afford anything, here. so they have to have a constant rotation of jobs. One of them said, one of the articles actually said, we ran out of money. Um, we had to go rake the lawn of Chris Valentin. That's what they were putting their Bethel students doing, breaking lawns to Chris Valentin so they could earn money to live in a city that they've never been to. That's all owned by the stinking church. Oh my. Yes. And then they're also required 10% of theirs. Oh, income of by the, well, of course. You know. I can't express to you how deep this goes. I mean, in reality, ever. In, like, do you want our personal experiences? Like we went there and were prophesied over and watched their dancing Kundalini stuff. Like I was there, I watched it. I saw it in person. Do you want their prophecy? Um, oh, what are those called? Angel cards. What are they? Uh, tarot cards. Um, Bethel has a tarot card reader. Do you want to go with their um, prophecy Zoom call line where they will Zoom call you a prophecy? Do you want to go with the, the reading declarations in which the entire church stands up and reads from the board about how awesome Reading is going to become and how God is going to bless Reading. The entire church does that? Or do you want to talk about how the kids do that in their Sunday school lessons? Wow. Do you want to talk about how the businesses have invaded or how many God businesses are around and prophecy jewelry and t-shirts and you can go and take their art classes and then buy paintings that were prophesied by God? Like, which direction do you want to go in, guys? Or all the other higher ups that are involved. Do you want to know Bethel? about how the Julie Congress. Winters, our mayor, was in Bethel? Do you want to know about how many things she personally passed individually so that Bethel could benefit? Do you want to learn that about the tattoo parlor? On Earth. <laughs> do you want to live? Uh, do you want to talk about the tattoo parlor and the smoke shop that they closed down that has been a Reading institution oh. forever because they didn't like the paintings on the side of it? And who wants a smoke shop downtown where Bethel's going in? Where they bought every piece of land. Who would want that? Do you want to talk about how they own the Chamber of Commerce? which is the entire networking of our town. Every business that goes into the Chamber of Commerce, which is our business networking town. Do you want to talk about how all the uppers and that belong to Bethel? Wow. How every city project has a Bethel person in it. How the designer of the entire downtown is a Bethel student and um, literally designs and remodels all the downtown buildings so they all have the same feel to them i think that company's called modern yeah uh, rad rad was one of them mm -hmm. like i you know this is why what? again for the podcast because every time we talk with you guys we're like wait what come again like how see like i, I thought I, the I, last thing you said was bad how huh what? Exactly. I knew a lot of this, but then there's so much that I didn't. And obviously you have blown my mind with how ingrained they are into the things that. There are many articles written that summarize it like this. Reading would not exist without Bethel. Huh. 
They state it that plainly. Mm -hmm. Without Bethel, there would be no Reading. And then people get on the boards and fight about Reading was here longer. Bethel, without their support, if they all of a sudden one day were like, we're out, we're going to go somewhere else and just plucked up everything, Reading would crumble. Oh, yeah. Our right entire right. infrastructure, we would die. The whole town, everybody. It would be awful because of how ingrained they are. If they just up and left every building that they owned, our infrastructure would crumble. The entire thing. Yeah. One tenth of our town would be missing. How many doctors is that? How many buildings are that? How many, like... That's a big part of our town, too, is just our two hospitals because they're, like, high cancer... Uh, we have one of the most, most um, advanced cancer places here, and then we have a heart doctor who is world known. We she have a couple. Of, we I've have a couple of world known doctors here, and like legit, they're world known. My dad actually is going to uh, the world known heart doctor. Makes me feel a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, they own everything. They're they're so ingrained, so ingrained. I even when I was working at America's Tire because they have a discount tire everywhere else. Um, it's called discount tire in other parts of the United States. Mm -hmm. When they reached California, that name was taken, so they had to change their name slightly with a franchise. Yep. That's how this works. So you guys would all know it as as discount tire everywhere else. When yeah. you guys are here it's known as America's Tire. Um, but just working there, honestly, we had a constant influx of people that were going to Bethel, but they got a job where they were at so that when they transferred, they could transfer to our store and have a job and go to that school. Oh, wow. So <laughs> I've seen that happen a lot with bigger businesses, even like Targets and um, Walmarts. They'll get a job, whatever it is in their town, and then save up some money, and then they'll transfer with that job to come here to go to Bethel. That's unstinking believable. And, you know, we don't see any of this difference in society from training and doing all of these schools and all of these different things. It's funny that people don't question these things. It's like where, you know, if these things are, are effective and they're actually doing things and training all these people, where is it? Where is, why is our world falling further and further away? Why are our, our numbers of Christianity and even you know, the, some of the more recent polls and everything. I mean, 60% of people don't even believe that the Bible is the word of God. I mean, mm -hmm. and, but yet we're, 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 I mean, you said how many students a month? Oh, they have about 1,800 students. I think it's a year because they take okay, so um, a year. each, each graduate is supposed to be there for three years. So it's a, it's a three year school. And then there are other schools that you get a certificate or a license in a year. But their regular BSSM school, that's three years. So like, why isn't the world being changed, right? Why are people- so Why isn't it like fantastic and amazing and the best thing ever? Because I think only like 10% of them actually leave and all the rest of them just stay here because they can't afford- Oh, oh, oh obviously that's why Reading's so good. Right? Reading is so good because we have all of the people who have graduated from yep. Bethel and who are making the world a better place again. They're all here. There's lots of people that have been here for the last 20 years because they moved here for Bethel. They came here and took their class, graduated, and then stayed. Because in that time, they, you know, they, they created a family, and then all their spouses have, that all have, were already here living, they have all their family here. You're living in heaven. Yep. Yes. I'm not kidding. There are signs around Reading that say heaven on earth. Like, you know, the, okay, so do you guys have, it's like triple digits and it never yeah. rains, right? Yes. Signs, yes. It's like the yes. surface of the sun. Yes. <laughs> the surface of the sun is now heaven on earth, obviously. But you know, those like green freeway signs that say like how far you have to go to somewhere or the name of the town. Okay. So we have some of those around and they say heaven on earth, but it's like a freeway sign and it says Green's heaven on earth. Is. Reading. Yes. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Oh, wow. Yes. I have so many issues here.
here I kind of we don't know where to start <laughs> <laughs> I told you that's why I sent over this list and I'm like I don't know where you guys want to go with this and I know it looks like a big old well, brain dump now you see why it looks like this but at least it's color coded that's what I said the way that this is unfolded I think this is unfolded as a good first one because this at least introduced all those things in the list that we talked about so we the next podcast that we do, I think we are going to go straight to the list okay. because so much. this is this opened that up perfectly for people to be able to get to know you guys and hear us talk and know that this is not and you're there. There mm -hmm. is absolutely no, um, you know, goal here, influence that you're trying no. to, you know, there's there's no. nothing. People often accuse me of, I've got a couple of my YouTube comments pulled up so I could just read them. People often accuse me of just wanting to pull out dirt on other people uh, just to, it's, uh, they accuse me of speaking with little grace. Um, why would anyone want to know Christ? Because I call out these teachers. Um, they, they call me divisive. And, you know, so this is, uh, these are all these things that I'm saying we're definitely not. That's not the goal. The goal is to show you how serious that this is. Mm -hmm. I, I love people from a distance, but I love people. <laughs> I, <laughs> I think that my heart breaks when they're being misled, when they're being misled and they don't know it. I love these people deeply. I think their motives, anybody who attends, not the uppers necessarily, because I cannot speak, I think that their motives are questionable. Yeah. But anybody who is just going there and just attending their church or just listening to their music, I don't question their salvation. I don't know if they have it, but it's not like I'm going to question it. Sure. Sure. I think quite a few of them, I think most of them really, really have a yearning to know God. Sure. And absolutely. they see this fancy version of God and they're like, oh my gosh, that's a God I want to know. That looks like fun. I want to know that God. And I think that that's leading them astray for financial gain. Yeah, that's exactly if, what it is. If somebody belonged to an MLM and didn't know it, I would tell them, I love you, but the people who are above you, they're mistreating you. They're making money on you who are vulnerable and just trying to survive and make it. They are personally benefiting from you doing this. And I don't know if you know that it's an MLM, I don't mind that you're in the MLM. You can make your own decision. You are your own human being. I will not force things upon you. But I love you enough to tell you that MLMs exist and that yeah, you're what right. you're looking at, in my opinion, is an MLM. But I really want you to see the same information that I've seen. I'll look at your information, no problem. But I want you to look at my information and I want you to see that I love you and that I don't want you to be hurt by people who are trying to benefit from you. Amen. I love you that much. Yep. I don't want you to suffer. I don't want that for you. So yeah. I care deeply about these people who are being manipulated for gain. I can't tell you the hearts of the uppers. I can't, I can't tell you if they're saved. I, I don't know. I sincerely hope they are and that maybe they're just misguided right now or maybe being used in some very strange situation to bring more people to Christ because that happens. Sure. Oh. sure. But I think that the lower people need to realize or be exposed to information. more information. Yes. Um, yes. Like the Mormons, they are purposefully withheld information do not go and search this information out do not their uppers and their leaders and their elders actually restrict their information i want to go to them and say 
you're missing part of this. They literally are hiding this from you and you can't see it. Let me show you. All I need to do is make sure that somebody has seen it. I can't make you believe it, but I can show you what I found and maybe one day you'll come to the same conclusion I did and know that it's not that, like that's not the only way to know God. You don't have to know God like that. That's a weird, version of God. Weird version of God. Like, <laughs> yeah. Exactly, Drew. I don't need to do work to make up for what God's lacking. God's not lacking. Yes. God's not like, lacking anything. I, I don't know why I need to do these miracles and I, I don't know why I need to proclaim it. God is awesome and he's going to do what he says and he doesn't need my permission. Yeah. Exactly. It, yeah, not at all. Yeah. I feel like uh, Jim in the office with my whole brings and uh, starts selling phone cards. Yeah. So what, what you Let me with? show you the triangle. <laughs> the, 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 you know, this is literally a pyramid. Too, we're like, see, look, you're, you're in the pyramid. You're in the pyramid. The Michael, this is really a pyramid scheme. You need to go make some phone calls. <laughs> but Jim's like, I love you so much, dude, but really, just, just uh, let me show you. Let me educate you because I don't think you see this. Let me point out this very obvious triangle. Let me point out how obviously bad Bethel is. Let me help you see this because you aren't in my town and you don't see it every day. And people on the internet get it almost right. And it can infect your church. And probably yeah, will. I, I mean, yes. And it probably the will. So they're kind of like the coronavirus of church. Exactly. They're the COVID <laughs> church. And you, might feel, <laughs> and you might feel like you're at a sound church yeah. mm -hmm. and they just listen to a little Bethel music. They just bring in a little it Jesus. Is. It's like the coronavirus of church. That. Be, be as, you know, might, might make a t shirt of that. Bethel <laughs> and honor your fear of coronavirus. Exactly. <laughs> like, be afraid of, it, of Bethel as you are the Rona because. I mean, it's like you said, it's, it's in everything. And I look forward to doing more with the more with you. I'm sorry, Sabrina, uh, to, to volunteer you and you too, Drew, both to more, but I we mean, asked like, for one podcast and now it'll be like a 20 part. Like series. I said, I mean, this is we just, kind of, we kind of already assumed that's what it was going to be. Sadly, <laughs> sadly, the no, moment please. I agree, I knew, I knew too much. Well, crud, this is not going to go in my favor. This is good for me because people finally get to hear that, no, You're I'm not, not being just mean. being mean. I, I mean, I, yeah. I work with these people. I talk with these people. I have more people in my church, just like you, that have mm -hmm. been through the same situation. They're not in Reading, but they were, they've, they've come out of the, the I, NAR in this movement. And right? Damaging. It's it's damaging. I, I mean, can quote all kinds of Bible verses. Like I was taught them. I wasn't taught them in context. Yeah. But I can yeah. tell you them. Like a good Christian. Right? Like I can. Mm -hmm. I can tell you I'm like a good Christian girl should. But that doesn't mean I know them in context. That doesn't mean that I understand what they're actually saying. It just means that I can repeat words. Yeah. In well, order for a candy bar. One of our, one of the older, older ladies in our church, uh, Sabrina, yeah, I mean, everybody knows who I'm talking about, but she uh, came out of this, the same thing. And I mean, she's in her seventies and she's your perfect candidate for, I love her to death. I know she's saved. I know she mm -hmm. wants to follow Christ. I know that. But those yeah, people, those people are absolutely taking advantage of somebody yes. like her and they are and. And to people that don't have that strong of faith and will that this mm -hmm. particular person does, mm -hmm. they, yep. they, they turn them away eventually. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it just turns in. And you even see the older people that have this, they despise God. And they, you know, you even see that happens. And a lot of this could be. Instead of softening, away. they get hard. Yeah. But that's why, like, you know, I, I, I've talked to you. I've talked to a bunch of people like this and have just. You know, this is honestly, I spend more time correcting bad mm -hmm. things that people have learned than I get to teach the good things. People always want to go, well, teach the good things. I go, well, I, tr I do, and they're very few because it's very simple. It's just that all these teachers have made them a lot more complicated than they need to be. <laughs> if, so I've said 
this to you through like text messages, but I don't think you've, you've ever understood it. Unless you told me what a bad church looked like. Right. I didn't know I belonged to a bad church. I didn't know that. I didn't know it was bad until you showed me. No, look, it, it literally says this. No, look, it literally says this. Let me read it to you in a chapter, not a verse. I'm going to read a chapter to you and explain this to you in a chapter. Before somebody told me that I was in a wrong church, I was leading my children down a wrong path. And only teaching about the good things is exactly what gets us into the issue that we're at right now. Bethel only preaches the good things. Um, they Benny only, Hinn only preaches good things. They only heal. They only save. So that's what you think a church is about. And then you don't realize that you have, you have been boiled longer than you ever thought you were boiled. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you've been but cooking you for a while. You wouldn't know that unless you, Brandon, literally said, this is what a bad church looks like. Not my husband, but this is what a bad <laughs> church looks like. <laughs> Did I say it in that, like that? Hopefully not in that octave. <laughs> no, but this is what a bad church looks like. Guys, come on. This is what's yeah. wrong. This is why you feel this way when you walk into a church. This is, Sabrina, why you feel so gross when you walk into these worship services. This is the word that describes what you're feeling. Let me give you the word so that you have the definition, because you already had it. You felt it. This is what that word is. And I didn't know that word until you told me that word. So that somebody reaching, or that nobody reaching nobody's. I had to be reached like this. This is what not to be. This is how not to be. This is what not to do. I have to be reached that way. Somebody has to talk to the people who need to be reached that way. Somebody has to talk to them. Everybody can talk to people, but you're only going to, you're only going to spark that little spark in some people. And what I've been fed doesn't spark anything it's just milk i needed somebody to show me what a steak was and then say look you've been getting milk the whole time isn't that sad isn't it sad that you've had to survive off of milk let me show you what steak is oh, oh sure look at how great steak is look at how yeah. much more you can survive look at how much more sustained you are steak steak i heard i heard somebody compare um fluffy Bible, milky Bible, to, um, to cotton candy. And I thought it was the best analogy Ooh, ever. That, it's yeah, cotton candy. Perfect. It's sweet and sticky. You love it. It looks you big, love it. Puffy, beautiful. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Everybody Appetizing. wants it. If you see it at the carnival, like everybody wants it. And then because you have it, everybody else wants to go get it. Okay, you see this? Now, when you eat cotton candy, it tastes great for a moment. For it tastes really second. good. And it's like, <laughs> yes, this is delicious. I love this. And then you, you, eat the entire thing, you eat the entire thing and you're going to throw up on your way home because it made you sick. You should not live on cotton candy. That's perfect. You need more than sweet cotton candy and fluffy susted like air because that's all it is. When you put it in your mouth, it dissolves. It's air. Mm -hmm. It's nothing. It looks like substance, but it's nothing. It dissolves. You, you need a steak, not cotton candy. You yeah. can't live on cotton candy. You can eat it for a while. You can dabble on it, I guess. It's not good. Right, it make you sick. You can't survive on it. You need steak. Also, give me diabetes. <laughs> give me diabetes. Well, what happens when you, for the nose people, once you get sick on something, right? You walk yeah. away. From it. You don't want to touch cotton candy again. Ever, mm -hmm. ever, ever again. Like, because I you ate so at. much of it that you threw up, and then every time you eat it, you think of that throwing up. You think of how ill that thing made you. Like, no, that's how you. ill Bethel music makes us. That's how yeah. ill their formula makes us. 
we just happened to see the marketing behind it and the the dynamics of his business mind that's it which which he has done and i will not stop stressing this throughout this whole series but which he has done to affect and permeate every area of doctrine and, and music in the church across the world. And when you have this heretical doctrine like they teach, that they're just throwing this out there in their music, and and it's going all across the country. Like, this is heresy, like, in, in little bits of it everywhere. And it, mm -hmm. it only takes some music to get you in a different mindset about all of these different promises that God has uh, for your life, for all these different things. This gets you into this, you know, like, oh, it gets you in a completely different mindset. Because you're emotionally charged now for whatever it is that the music is singing. The, the word you guys are looking for is hypnotized. Yeah, that's exactly. the word you're looking for. Exactly. Because that's what it does. It's yeah. rhythmic. And it's formulated to be this way. I heard one of the worship pastors talk. You have to play this kind of song, and then you play this song, and then this song, and then you play this kind of song. And this is the formula and the order you play songs in because it heightens the people's emotions. It keeps them at a heightened emotion, and then it casually brings them back down so that the pastor can then gain control and speak. They have a formula for this to make you feel certain ways and control you through music like this is what they're taught so if they're hypnotizing or guiding music this way why why do you feel like you're not being hypnotized by it right. like that's literally that's what they're doing all right sorry for the abrupt end but after making it through this nearly two hour long podcast. A little over two hour, yeah. Yeah, we were, we ended up at this point, we had been on for four hours uh, talking, which we, uh, we had a lot of fun, but uh, we, we edited it down a little bit. Yeah. And uh, this is where it ended. So we will be picking up, as we said in the uh, introduction, we will be picking up with uh, our, our next little mini series episode of this Bethel Unmasked, Exposed, whatever. Yeah, taking that that these seven mountain mandates, right? His goals of what they're trying to do there, and, and looking and at each one each in the category, one, and yeah. seeing what the heck they're doing. Yeah, exactly. It's disturbing. And and um, I was okay. Yeah, I mean, I guess I could have said that in the in the intro. I, I was I was thinking that I wasn't going to mention what what we were going to do, but I don't know why. Uh, so yeah, the seven mountain mandate basically, and go through each individual points of the seven mountain mandate. And uh, like you said, just it's it's scary stuff, man. And this is probably things that even churches in your community practice that you're just unaware. So, but you know, they're bringing heaven on earth, starting there in Redding, California. Mind you, it's you know 120 plus every day, and yeah, they're, they're running out of water. But heaven on earth, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> All righty, thank y'all for making it this far. We'll see you next time.